All right, guys, so when we're coming into a spot like this, uh, looking for grass for uh, the slobber knocker, post spawn fish, we wanna be close to some deeper water. You can see right here, there's deeper water close by. But this is a nice little island top, tops out in about seven, eight feet of water. And there's gonna be some nice eel grass uh, and maybe some other milfoil or hydrilla as well growing on top of that. Uh, the bait fish are gonna use it, shad are gonna spawn on top of there. That'll, that bite will last all the way through the morning, especially with cloudy conditions right now. Um, but let's give this a shot. It looks right, just outside of a spawning pocket, close to current. Should be able to get a bite, I would think. There he is. Had to pull up here with the old slobber knocker, guys. <laughs> That's hog right away. Dude, that is a good one. All right, ready? I'm trying, probably shouldn't boat flip. Well, why not? That's a fatty, guys. Berkeley slobber knocker with the little power stinger on it. Fat, that's a heavy four. Nice fish right off the bat. Let's get back in there. You gotta start with a bite like that. That's fun. It's cloudy, warm water, probably almost 80 degrees, right at 80 degrees. Days are getting long. Water's warming up. And they like using the edge of this eelgrass. You know, the eelgrass has come to Gunnersville the last several years and really taken over. And it's more of a nuisance than anything, but the fish do use it. And, you know, they like using the edge of it. That's the key. Uh, they don't like being, or they like being on top of it, but they don't like being down in it. It's up on top, on the edge. Gotta look for the holes. It's weird how there's holes that are just created. I don't know if it's from current, the way it washes out certain sections of eelgrass or whatever, but I'm not gonna argue about it. I'm not a scientist. I don't know exactly why, I just know they like it and it works. Little guy. Brought it right off the edge of that grass. Don't ruin my trailer. Look at that. That Berkeley Power Stinger holds on there really, really well. Great bait keeper on the slobber knocker. That one on the slobber knocker. There's one piece of grass sticking out there a little bit further. That's what he was sitting on. That's when that 360 comes in handy because I wouldn't have seen it like I could on the 360. So, number two on the slobber knocker. Gosh, dude, I'm letting you go, don't worry. Just want to show you off for the camera. All right, guys, so right here you can see, uh, you can see some of these fish down in there. They're sitting right on the edge of that grass. There's some up on top too, but the 360 is not gonna draw them out on top. Show you what it looks like on active target. You can see a few there right on the edge. Uh, and then there's gonna be some up on top as well, but we're trying to throw up on top, catching some on top. And once we get to the edge, letting the bait fall and then working it real slow back to the boat. All right, so we're gonna bomb it out there. I'm gonna let it fall just to get in the top of that eelgrass. So there it stopped. And now I'm gonna kind of, I think Ike and Ellie came up with the term, but kind of feather it through that grass. I'm not trying to reel it so fast that it gets away from the grass. And this grass is deep, you know, so I'm, I actually have to let it sink a little bit uh, and I'm not it's not a steady retrieve it's it's almost like a yo-yo retrieve but you got to keep it close to that grass if you get away from it you're not going to get bit so throw it out let it sink watch your line as soon as it stops 
as soon as it stops, you kind of want to engage it because you don't want it sinking too far in that grass that you're going to get hung up like crazy and have a bunch of grass on your bait. The fun part about this bite is they'll generally hit it when you, uh, when you pull it up and it's falling back down, man, they hit it hard. Literally said, let's make a move and then catch fish. Chased it up out of some grass. Skinny Gunnersville bass, real skinny. Let him go. Well, the old slobber knocker caught us another one. And this thing, guys, I'll talk to you real quick about some of the features on this bait that I really, really like. So you can see right here with the slobber knocker, it's got an awesome uh, bait keeper right here. It's a hand tied skirt, but this bait keeper does a great job at holding the bait up. Today we're using the Berkeley Power Stinger. Uh, really like this guy as well. I love the little uh, uh, like honeycomb style tail to it. It's got a lot of action and it's got some thick plastic right in there that holds on that bait keeper great. You can see the hook point right here or the angle of the hook. I love that little EWG uh, kind of kale style hook. Super, super sharp fusion hook. And then another thing you're gonna notice about this is the blade actually running through the head, not just the eye of a jig head. So uh, it's got a little different, unique sound because of that, but still a nice tight vibration and a great quality snap on it. You know, we've been catching a lot of good fish on this thing past few days, and that snap is in perfect shape still. So I'm gonna rig this power stinger back up. It's gotten abused a little bit, but I think we can still get a, a little more out of it. So that's the four inch one. I'm cutting just a little bit off on the head. But that's what we're going for right there. Perfect shad imitation bait. <laughs> the worm good. Corey's getting all ready for the slow mo, and I'm fucking keeping the fish up on the front of the boat. What, 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 what exactly is going on here? You ready for your slow mo? Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Fired. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, guys, this is a, uh, like I said, a little bit deeper area. The grass is probably topped out in seven or eight feet of water. So I am throwing the half ounce sauber knocker, uh, but it comes in a three eighths as well. So if you were fishing some shallower grass, uh, you could definitely, you know, throw that three eighths. I really like it like under four feet and then everything deeper than four, I'd prefer the half myself. And then as far as gear, um, you know, I keep it, I, I would say I keep it pretty simple. I'm 15 or 17 pound fluorocarbon. Um, me personally, I like the Trilene 100%. It's all I use. Uh, and then as far as a rod, what you're looking for is like a 7.2 medium heavy to a 7.5 medium heavy. That's really the perfect size. You want something with a you know, little bit of a softer tip, but still strong enough backbone to it that you can put this hook through. But it's a bait that vibrates a lot and you don't want that instant, instant feel when you get a bite. Like you want it to load up and let those fish uh, eat the bait better. You know, that's gonna allow them to get it further back in their mouth. So uh, me personally, again, a 7.5 medium heavy Abu Garcia winch. And then as far as reels go, just something that's a slower gear ratio. Not super slow, you don't want a five, four or five, whatever. To me, that's too slow, unless it was like the dead of winter. 
but a six something is perfect. So uh, I like a six, six to one. Um, that to me is a perfect size. You can get by too, I would say with the lower seven, like a seven one or seven three, uh, that would work too. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, anytime you're throwing baits that you're moving through the water column with the reel, right? So like when I say that, I'm casting this bait out, letting it sink, and I'm creating the action with this bait um, by reeling the bait. So there's a lot of pressure against the bait and the or against the reel and the rod and the water. Anytime I've got a bait, there's one. Jeez, he knocked the crap out of it. I don't think it's a bass, dude. No way that's a bass. Yeah, it's a catfish. <laughs> we'll use it for the teaser. Come on. Don't get on the screen though. Flip it on him. Don't get on him. Don't get on him. Flip it on him. Dude, I don't want to touch that thing. We'll use it for get the it off, Corey. Get it you're, off. You're the caddy. Come on, Corey. <laughs> Would you quit bouncing the mother? I'm not bouncing him. All right, so before we were so rudely interrupted by the catfish, look at that. Oh. Before we were in, rudely interrupted by them, um, the re so anytime you're reeling a bait through the water column, like we were talking about with this, so that'd be like crankbait, spinnerbait, um, swimbait, I always like a lower gear ratio, like a 6'3", 6'6", 6'4", 7'1", somewhere in there. Uh, and then, you know, if I'm fishing a bait on the bottom, something I'm dragging and I'm actually moving the bait, giving the action to the bait with my rod tip and all I'm using the reel for is picking up slack in the line, then I want a faster reel. So just keep that in mind. Anytime you're fishing a moving bait, whether it's chatter bait or anytime you're fishing a bottom dragon bait too. Faster reels for the bottom dragon baits and then um, slower reels for the baits that you're moving through the water column. Spot. Spot of bass on the slobber knocker. I actually caught my biggest spot of bass here last week, a four and a quarter. Biggest one I've ever caught on, on Gunnersville. Not the biggest one I've caught here yet. But you know that's a spot when they got that little rough spot right there on their tongue. You can see that. Pretty little spot. Let him go. All right, guys. Hey. Definitely make sure to check out the slobber knocker, the power stinger on the back. It's the perfect combination. Uh, the other great thing about this is all the colors are matched up together. So any power stinger uh, that's available by Berkeley is also going to have a slobber knocker in a color that's going to match up perfectly. Doesn't matter if you need a shad type color like this, all white, white chartreuse, bluegill, black blue. Uh, I think we even have the black, blue, and purple, which is an awesome color down in Florida and in, in some real dirty water. So uh, we're going to probably keep fishing for a little bit longer, but I want to start catching them on something else. So you guys make sure to check out the slobber knocker on tacklewarehouse.com. If you enjoyed this video, like it, share it with your friends, and come back for more. We're always going to have good stuff for you here at Tackle Warehouse. <laughs>